Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Okay, preemptive like. Um, hi guys, my name is Connor. I like to have a laugh and various things. Um, original link to the vid. Did I say this? Top description, Discord link below that. Love to have you. Stephen Fry on American versus British comedy. Uh, yeah, let, let's, let's go. Let's see. Um, we have time for one more question, uh, which will come from the gentleman there. Uh, you talk about the uh, sense of humor, the American sense of humor, and we haven't really touched, you haven't mentioned so much the British sense of humor, but do you think they differ hugely? And if so, what accounts for that difference? It's a really good point. I think, um, it, I mean, it strikes at the heart of what is American optimism. Is, it's a really important thing. Well, not only optimism, but a, um, a, a refusal to see oneself in a bad light or, you know, I mean, one, one could talk about this for far too long, but, but the, the, if you go to an American bookshop, by far the biggest section is self-help and improvement. The, you know, the idea that, that life is refinable and improvable and that you can learn a technique for anything, whether it's lovemaking, being a, a, a businessman, a, a marriage, cooking, losing weight, uh, whatever it is, there's, a, there's an NLP way of doing it, there's an Anthony Robbins way of doing it, there's a things they didn't teach you at Harvard way of doing it. There's an unbelievable sense that life is improvable, that you can be lectured at, or indeed given a sermon at, you know, that that's, it's the Protestant base of America, that, that things are done by text and by works, as opposed to by submission and by you know, a doctrine in the way that the higher church, you know, European you know, rump, uh, we still believe. And, and there is a sense of original sin in Europe. I mean, this is a bizarre theory that I won't push to its limit, but when it comes to comedy, it, it's satisfactorily, I think, obvious that the American comic hero is a wisecracker who is above his material and who is above the idiots around him. And the British comic, Put it this way, the American comic hero, like John Belushi or someone like that, is the, you know that scene in uh, Animal House where, the, where there's, a, play, uh, there's a fellow playing folk music on a guitar and John Belushi picks up the guitar and destroys it and the cinema loves it because he just smashes it and then waggles his eyebrows at the camera. Everyone says, God, he's so great. Well, a British comedian would want to play the folk singer. <laughs> <laughs> You, we want to play the failure. All the great British comic heroes are, are, are people who want life to be better and who, on whom life craps from a terrible height and whose sense of dignity is constantly compromised by the world letting them down. They want to wear a tie. They're not quite smart enough to wear an old school tie because they're kind of lower middle class. They are Arthur Lowe in, in Dad's Army. They are... Anthony Aloysius Hancock, they are Basil Fawlty, they are Del Boy, they are Blackadder, they're not quite the upper echelons, and they try to be decent and right, everything tries to be proper, they're even David Brent from The Office, and their lack of dignity is embarrassing, they are a failure, they are an utter failure, they're brought up to expect empire and respect and decency and being able to wear a blazer in public and everyone around them just goes <laughs> <laughs> Whereas the American hero is the smart talk, he's Jim Carrey and he's Ben Stiller and he's, you know, okay. whoever, he just goes all the way back. They can wisecrack their way, way out of any situation. They win the girl, they're smarter, they've got the biggest knob in the room. <laughs> the British guy arrives in the room and says, oh my God, I've left my, left my knob behind. I, I, I haven't even got one. And in a sense, <laughs> comedy is the microcosm that allows us to examine the entire difference between our two cultures. Ours is bathed in failure, but we make a glory of our failure. We celebrate it. We love the fact that every great British comic hero can go into a dictionary. He's a bit of a Basil Fawlty. He's a bit of a Captain Mannering. He's a bit of a Steptoe. He's a bit of a, he's a, bit of a Baldrick. He's a bit of a Blackadder. He's a bit of a this. He's a, you know, that, that characters that we recognize, all of them so flawed as to be an utter disaster. But you can't do that with American comedy. You can't say he's a bit of, who's that chap in Friends, or he's a bit of a, you know, it doesn't really work. They're not characters at all. They're just brilliant repositories of fantastic killer one-liners. Oh. Nope. I saw this. Nope. Um, we have to 
I was just about to just pause to finally make a comment, but it was over there. Brilliantly said. They're not characters at all. They're just, he's a bit of a, you know, it doesn't really work. They're not characters. The flawed is to be an utter disaster. I feel like there are sometimes these characters in American comedy are often. It's just that they're the B character or the C character, mainly to make the A character look even better, you know? So whenever, like, that British, like, style of comedy that, that's, that is usually there with the main character and is funny and everything, like, is, like, the B character, like, like your, your George Costanza to your Seinfeld or, or whatever you want to do. Uh, um, but I, I think a great example is, is the American office and how it changed. I've said this a few times uh, if we're comparing British to American comedy or what I don't like about one or the other or like about one or the other. Is so the American office was made like the first episode, the pilot, excuse me, um, was like the, like just the pilot of the British, the version, the original office, just like redone basically. Right. And it kind of continues, I think, by at least American standards, continues that British comedic style for the first, like, four seasons, and I'll explain what I mean by that, and then much less so for five and six, and then seven to nine, I don't even watch. I don't even watch them. Maybe a few of them might, might be funny, but, and it's not just because, oh, that's because Michael Scott leaves in, in the seventh season, and so, yeah, that's true when Michael Scott goes the main character goes, whatever, but he was there for five and six, and so it's not exactly the reason I don't like it. The reason that I, I think I think the American British comedy kind of style of the first four seasons of the off I have a point, I'm, I promise, okay? It starts to be enveloped by pure American comedy as the seasons go on, and it's no longer like, ooh, this actually sort of feels like if I wanted to apply somewhere at a like a paper firm, this could sort of be kind of what it's like. Uh, not obviously completely, but eventually it loses that, and then all of these crazy scenarios happen, and and every in the end, everyone gets together with the person that that they were, that the audience wants them to get together, and everyone gets their dream job, and everyone lives happily ever after. Well, it's like. Life isn't always like that, and the reason I liked The Office, one, two, three, four, American One, is because it felt like, oh my god, this kind of feels like this could be a business office somewhere, and then it just gets taken over by crazy scenarios, and, and, yeah. So, um, that was good, that was great, he's such a smart guy, I could, I could just listen to him talk for a while. Um, if you're able to talk and have me listen without me pressing the pause button for more than three minutes, then, then you're someone who's really captivated me. Uh, nice video. Oh, post emptive like. And, uh, let me know what you guys think the differences and what you like better. I'd be surprised if anyone likes the American style better. Uh, but yeah, love you guys. Chin up if you're not doing well. You'll be good soon. Look at me. Trust me. You'll be good soon. Don't worry. Bye.